position under your bench or what I find I actually like to do is just hold the hook knife a little bit closer to my body support it against my chest and then I can have a really good look at it at the same time there so starting on that edge working around just rotating the tool as we go okay so we've now done the outside bevel we've done the inside bevel but hopefully now what we've done is we've achieved two flat surfaces meeting at one point because we've come from both sides there's a tendency that you hook the metal over and create what we call a burr now to try and remove that burr what I normally do is just go back to that inside face again with my curved edge of my push stick and I'm just going to very gently and very lightly just touch up that inside face and what that's going to do is just hook that metal back over. What we're trying to do now is we're trying to hook that burr back and forth create almost metal fatigue so that it just foot pops off. So I'll go back to that outside bevel just very gently, very light pass all the way around and now we're ready for the next stage which will be the stropping. Okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to show you the technique of stropping the tool. We've charged up our leather strop and I normally start on the outside bevel again. So we're going to use the flat side of our strop, placing it back on our little wooden block, stropping away from the cutting edge. It's important now that we don't push the leather into the cutting edge. One, it'll cut your strop up, but because of that grit being in the leather, you'll actually dull your tool. So ensure that you're pulling straight off the bevel and lifting it back up and placing it there for the next stroke. So we'll work around that curve, Again, take that different grasp to the body so that you can get to that nice hook nose of the tool. All the way around. Just touch that a little bit more there. And then what we can do is we can flip it and we can do the inside part of our curve now with the radius edge of the strop. Again, ensuring that we only push away from the cutting edge. And making sure that you lift it away from the tool before drawing back. The advantage of using the leather as opposed to the sandpaper for trying to remove that last little piece of burr is because the leather is soft, it gives ever so slightly and will leave us with a very, very, very slightly rounded cutting edge. This almost sounds as if it's going to be a disadvantage, but that slightly rounded edge means that the cutting edge will actually last longer in use. It will reinforce it. So we'll just touch that outside. You can see how I keep flipping it from one side to the other, getting much, much more gentle with each stroke. So I'm almost just wiping that residual burr off. A few strokes on each side. And then what we'll do is we'll put that down, just get a simple bit of cloth, being very careful when you do this that it doesn't cut through your cloth and into your fingers. Just wiping it away from the cutting edge. Just wiping off any of that honing paste so we can have a look at our nice shiny bevel and ensure that we've got no flat spots. Okay, so we've checked the edge. I can't see any light or any flat spots on the tool. I can not see any burr hanging on there. If you do see any flat spots, you could go through the whole sequence again until you've got that cutting edge how you want it. But the main thing is, is not to round that bevel and to keep stropping it until you get rid of that burr. So I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. You can test it by very, very carefully touching your thumb onto the edge and just, just dragging it slightly so you can feel it bite into your skin. Never run your thumb along it because that will open it up really nastily. The other way that I sometimes do is I just test it on my fingernail so I hold it on a very 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 acute angle on my thumbnail if it slides off it's dull if it bites we know that we've got a nice sharp edge the best way probably is to actually get one of our spoons and actually give it a bit of a test run and see if it slices nicely and I can see by the actual finish that's being left on the spoon that we've got no little saw marks from a nick or a flat spot so I'm pretty happy with that. So once you've sharpened your crook knife the main thing to maintain that cutting edge is to actually look after your hook. 
The classic thing is to just put that in your tool bag and let it rub and jangle up against other items. So what we tend to do is protect that edge now that we've, we've got it nice and sharp. Because these are carbon steel and we've probably been using nice wet wood for carving our spoons, I tend to just wipe it down with a cloth and then before putting it away I use these little handy camellia oil applicators that again you can buy from pretty much anywhere now, these tool stores and things. You get the camellia oil applicator and just wipe the hook itself and ensure that you've got a nice thin coating of that camellia oil all over the surface of the blade. That's just going to protect it. Once you've got it oiled up, the easiest way we've found of protecting them is just to get a very thin strip of leather, pinch it onto the handle with your thumb, come up to the tip so that there's half of the leather on the blade and half off, and then just simply rotate it and then allow this strip to fold over that layer of leather over the cutting edge. Wrapping it round, get to about there, put your finger out, go round, and then put a little bite in that bit of leather. So you've got a handy little loop. So when you need to use your crook knife, you can just pull the tab. So hopefully that's gone through the sharpening procedure and showed you how cheap and simple it can be. Uh, and hope you enjoy giving it a go. The main thing is, it's not going to cost you a fortune and these are pretty much unbreakable. So you haven't got to worry about breaking any stones when you take them out with you in your rucksack. So give it a go.